study. So without much further ado, let me quickly run through because so that you guys can later go and have lunch or whatever. So thank you so much. Of course, later on, there'll be some Q and A or some question here and there. If any one of you would like to, uh, I would like to also request for every one of you to actually participate because this morning session is not just about one way traffic as much as I can. I hope that I can see many of you here, of course, so that we can have a better communication or probably have some question to ask me subsequently, right? But unfortunately, we are all in this Zoom environment. If there's any opportunity out there, do drop us a text here and there so that we can answer your question as much as I can. All right, without much ado, let us continue this uh, particular session here, especially this morning, we are all talking about what? Will the demand still be very strong for second half of 2023? Besides, we are talking about government supply. But I think I also want to touch on a little bit of the demand because a lot of people thinking that, right, will be thinking with the current cooling measures and interest rate matters, will it actually affect the demand? So can I just ask every one of you here, right? Uh, every one of you, can I just ask all of you here? Do you think that the market today here, right, with the cooling measure and interest rate involved now, right? Do you think that the demand will be still as strong or as not? If you think it's strong, can you type in number two? If you think not so strong, type in number three. Let me know your answer. Two or three. Two is strong. Three is uh, not so strong. Oh, wow. So many of you say strong. Wow. Why do you think that is strong? Right? So I'm a bit also surprised as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, helping me to type in as well. So thank you so much. Of course, if you ask me, right, I only can show you information. To be honest, I think to be the, to really be very frank to everybody here is that I would say that, right, definitely the demand definitely not as good as what you expected it to be. But what are the opportunity? Of course, we have to look at all this information, right? But before I show you all this information, right, just a disclaimer for myself, whatever that we shared here is based on my knowledge and my opinion. So, of course, at the end of the day, any of these uh, so-called investment-wise or buying things, you definitely need to do your due diligence according to what you are needed, especially comes to finances-wise. So, I think just now I asked the question, the demand for properties, right, will it be still as strong as what you used to be? So, of course, let me just show you. In my opinion here, definitely, I, I really tell you here, right, the demand may not be as good as what we used to be seeing in the year of 2021. 2021, I can say that, right, safely say that, right, the demand was really extremely good because why? First, interest rate was very low and the demand was strong after the COVID has opened up. Definitely, people want to buy. Of course, that's the reason why there's so-called cooling measure in place. Plus, with the increase in interest rate, definitely it will actually have a certain impact on the demand. So the question mark here is, the question mark here is, what is next? So most people will definitely want to buy when everybody starts buying. That is very normal because the human behavior is always like that. When everybody chong, definitely people want to go and buy, right? But when market is really slowed down, right? People will always think that, right? We'll always think in such a way that, hey, now the market is a little bit slow. I think the prices will come down. A lot of thinking process will definitely be there. So the question is, is it true or false? Let's see the information here. I just want you to look at this uh, important chart. Uh, I want to tell everybody this is a very, very important chart that I hope that all of you can really see it for yourself. Why, why do I mean by, uh, what do I mean by so, so-called important? So if you look at the information here, right? Uh, let me just adjust my screen a bit. Okay. So if you look at this information here, what do you understand? First and foremost, I want you to observe this, these colors. These are the volume that was low. This was volume was low. So if you look at the year of 2020, honest truth here is that that is COVID period, right? The volume actually so-called may not be as strong. If you look at 2014, 15, 16, right? Actually market was not strong because that time, right? If those who remember 2013, there was a lot of cooling measure that rise all the way up until the total debt servicing ratio, right? Actually create a full stop in terms of the volume of transaction because why loans issue la, here and now all these things will actually create a so-called a stop so after that what happened actually there is a seller stamp duty over here that was announced saying from four years dropped to three years and this is where the market start to pick up already if you look at this 
Then after it picked up so fast, right, July 2018, right, it came out with a cooling measure. So uh, the ABSD came out again. So with this, right, it again caused the, the supply to be what? The demand to be what? Slower a little bit here and there. But if you look at the 2020, that is where also the so-called demand was lower. Why? Because circuit breaker, everybody is also concerned about whether is it safe to buy or waiting for prices to drop. But you realize one very important aspect. I just want all of you to take note of one thing. In today's market, I can honestly tell you the demand would not be as high as what you see in the year of 2021. 2021, that time interest rate was low. Everything was so exciting. Everybody is like rushing in to buy. Everybody is the Kiasu syndrome in such a way that, well, if I don't buy, I'll miss out here and there. But you realize one thing here in, at the end of the day, right? When the volume was high, of course, the demand is high. That's the reason why it actually creates an up in terms of the price tags. So, of course, if you look at today's market, definitely, I would say that the volume is definitely going to be low. If you look at the last year, there's only 6,008 transactions for the new launches. You look at the previous year, look at the numbers, was 12,600 over units of new launch was sold. Why? Because the demand was high, everybody is excited, interest rate was low, everyone was positive, everybody go in and buy a property, which is very normal here, right? So it's, it's very normal. But if you look at today, look at last year, interest rate was high, uh, cooling measure in place. That's why you can see the volume is also low. But this year, again, you will start to see this year, the transaction in terms of new launch was higher. If you look at these numbers, uh, estimated uh, probably now, if you add up first half, uh, is about 3,338 3, 3, units, uh, so-called, that is uh, so-called sold in the market for new launch. If you look at the numbers, is it very high? So we expected that this year will reach about seven to 8,000. It will not be what we see in 2021 when market was so rosy, everybody is rushing in. It will not be. But if you realize what I'm trying to show you here is that those in orange, right? All these pink colors, sorry, pink color. Actually those people who choose to buy when everybody does not want to buy at that time, right? Always there's an advantage. In fact, later on, I'm going to share with you uh, with more information, right? You probably can understand why. Uh, as a, as a buyer yourself, you must always remember one very important aspect. That is how I look at properties, right? When the demand is not strong, there is always an opportunity out there in the market, right? Why do I say so? Which I'm going to share with you towards the number of slides later on, right? You will start to see all these statistics and information. My job is very simple because I look at numbers uh, uh, for so many years already. I'm inside out in terms of number. I can only tell you not based on what I feel. I based on what I see in the history and how it works eventually. Most important, you must remember property is all about property price up or down. It's all about supply demand one. When that today, to be honest, if you expect the prices to drop, right, it's very tough. Why do I say so? Later on, I will explain to you. Stay tuned with me. I will explain to you more in, in depth uh, why prices are still holding. But there is a window of opportunity at certain aspect. So I want you to understand how it works first. Eh? So if you look at the resale market, it's the same. Resale market in the year of uh, last year was about 12,000. If you look at the previous year, right, was also in terms of numbers, uh, was also not very high as well last year. Why? because the volume, uh, so everybody is rushing, right? So if you look at this year resale, right, it's about, now estimated it's only 4,000 over unit. Why a lot of resale numbers are not moving as high? First and foremost, today, uh, because of the interest rate and the cooling measure, I, I guess mainly, I, I'm not saying guess, I would say that the main draw factor is actually the interest rate. Interest rate is something that will definitely hold most people down because people are concerned about payment, which I totally agree with in terms of that. That's why a little bit, most people will choose to be right careful. But of course, as long as you have done what is needed in terms of financial, you must understand a little bit more about interest rate as well, which I'm going to explain to you in a short while. So if you ask me the overall demand, will it be high this year? Definitely, I'm going to tell you guys here, the demand overall is not as what you expect to be good in the year of 2021 or in the year of 2017. 
18, these are probably the very good period of time. But, but this demand and supply, there's all answers in place. So what I need you to know is how do I look at information? And if you look at recently, why the government released so many government land sales in the market? So a lot of people say, Kelvin, with the increase in number of land sales, right? Can I ask every one of you a question? With the increase in terms of government land sales, will the prices of the new launches be coming down? Or will the developer, not the new launcher, will the developer eventually sell at a lower price or higher price? Can you type inside the chat group? Uh, four means higher price. Five means lower price. Which one? Four or five? Can I ask everyone? Or some of you have four, some of you have five. Thank you so much, everybody, for those who are typing. Right? Not that I purposely want you guys to type, lah, but so that we can actually get everybody involved in terms of uh, talking to one another rather than just one-way traffic. Right? It's, it's a bit boring talking to yourself uh, sometimes on the screen. Right? Thank you so much, everybody, for helping me uh, to just contribute a little bit, make me feel that there's some audience in front of me as well. Right? So, of course, I think most people will always think that with the increase in terms of the volume, in terms of government land sale, generally developer can buy at a cheaper price means that they can sell at a lower price. So this is what most people think. Let me show you. In fact, if you look at this, is the latest second half of the government land sales. In fact, look at government, what has they do? Uh, you can see that they actually come up with many good plots of land. These are all very good plots of land. All very good plots of land. Right, the all are very good plots on that. Thompson wrote these two puzzles maybe yes and no, right? Because may not have enough in terms of uh, the pe that that location may not have enough uh, in terms of people may be interested. I'm not so sure, right? Let's look at how the developer work unless the price is right. But if you look at this, yeah, all these are good plot of land. Eventually, why the government want to release more land? First, of course, is to make sure that every one of you don't quickly rush into buying. Lah. That's the whole idea, right? That's why the government is raising the number of land sales, right? So that to ensure that the price is stable, which I totally agree because I'm supportive with the government. What they are trying to do here is to ensure that the price cannot jump up too fast and uh, make sure that it's stable. In fact, as an investor myself, I would prefer this mode rather than the prices go up too fast and then suddenly drop very badly, right? Which not what we wanted as well. That's the reason why the government, and this is the reason why if you look at 2007, that is where there's not enough cooling measure. In 2008, when layman crisis came into place, right? Wow, you can see how the property price, price drop uh, from, from my property, 1,000, 6,007 can drop to $900. But does it actually appear now in today's market? It will not. Why? Because of all the cooling measures in place, right? People are not speculative anymore. People are more careful in terms of purchase and they must make sure that they have holding power before they buy their property. So if you look at today's market, it's a bit different. So if you look at all the land bits today, the land bits are generally a good plot of land, which means that developer will also want to ensure they bid a better price in terms of getting the unit, right? But the question mark here is the question mark is, is with if they really bid lower, will they actually sell lower? Let me show you. This is all the so-called RCR land plots of land. If you look at the year of 2016, uh, land bids uh, for a uh, jet skip, uh, the land bid was only $791 per plot ratio uh, compared to the uh, wow, look at the price. It has moved this way. So, of course, why is this so? Because we all know very well in Singapore, it's all about land costs, construction costs. That's why the prices has gone up in this manner. But if you look at this, uh, Jetscape was bought at, the land was 791. You look at Margaret View, a uh, government land sales, uh, by right should be cheaper. Uh, they, bought, they bought it more expensive, 998. So we all expect Jetscape to sell at a lower price, right? Because why? The land cost is lower, ma. definitely they can sell lower. The answer is here. If you look at the break even for Jetscape, uh, average is about 1076. If you look at Margaret Viewer, average is 1551. Now, you look at Shunfu, this is Jetscape. Uh, you look at the price, 1617. This was launched at the same time, September 2018. You look at this, June 2018. Margaret Drive, Margaret View was also launched. You look at the price. So did the developer actually lower down their selling price to sell you? No, they will only sell when the market price is right. 
they also sell when the market they don't follow what they bought in terms of price they follow what the market price is supposed to be right the only thing that they have done here is that they are first mover they dare to buy when nobody is buying they dare to rush in developer is just human being you know they are also the same up because why it's all controlled by the ceos right so those who dare to buy when market is slow that time right they buy land the cheaper lah. but those who actually i mean eventually market will pick up when market pick up developer also become greedy they also eventually bid higher so when they bid higher eventually they still manage to what sell this kind of price but those who manage to buy developer who bought cheaper right eventually they make more profit lah. so same thing for buyers like yourself it's all about opportunities it's all about demand supply of course today uh, the only thing here is that the demand is not strong developer generally will also be more careful so as a buyer yourself at least you have a, an opportunity for you to look at information so but the question is how do we look at it that's important let me continue you look at another plot of land which is ocr look at midwoods the price is one six uh, not the price of uh, the land cost uh, sorry the land cost alone uh, is one zero six eight you look at parseries eight wow developer bought the land how much may 18 december 18 july 2018 is a cooling measure cooling measure so developer went in to buy the plot of land at a lower price right 684 so we all expected parceries it must sell cheaper than midwood am i right to say most of us will be thinking this way so again both of them actually launch you look at midwood they sell at what kind of price 1516 which is based on what their land cost and their selling price you look at parceries it land bids was this but today they sell at they launch at this price they launch in this year 2021 at the right timing the price they sold at this price so does not mean that the developer bought the land lower means they will sell you cheap they are just like as i mentioned they are buyers they dare to take risk to buy when the market was no good that's why eventually they bought a lower price so this is how generally it works so doesn't mean that developer bought cheap means they will sell cheap they follow what the market trend the only advantage they have here is what they have a flexibility in terms of selling their price they are much more easier in terms of looking at this so this is something that you probably need to take note does not mean it is the same it's just that they have the opportunity to be more flexible when it comes to selling. So the question is down the road, will the price come down or up? That is something that I will share with you later on. So why is it so they are not selling? Of course, very simple. They sell it at the time where the market is right too. So if you look at today, interest rate was high cooling measure actually the main concern is so much more is actually this call interest rate. If you ask me, if not because of interest rate, I think uh, the demand will be strong. You just look at the year of 2021, interest rate was like 0.5%, right? Was 0.5%. And if you look at today, today is 3 over percent. Definitely, it will definitely has a certain impact in the sense on in terms of prices. So that's the reason why I'm saying, if you look at this whole thing here, right? It's all about timing. So timing is something that is very important. Timing is when they launch and when they sell. That's why it's very important, right? So of course, the next question here is that, right? People always ask me as well. So Kelvin, look at today, the new launch and the resale price, there is a big gap, especially you look at this. The price gap between a new sales and the resale is about 58%. So a lot of time, many people say, Kelvin, should I be buying new or should I be buying resale? So if you look at this, can I ask every one of you to type inside the chat group, will you buy resale or new? If you want to buy resale, type RL. If you want to type new, you type N. So which one will you be buying? New or RL? N or RL? Well, some of you will say N, some of you will say RL. Of course, if you look at the price, the gap is 58%. That is the reason why the resale market is holding very strong. Why? Because everybody, eventually look at this price gap right 
they will choose to buy resale. For those people who have been looking at resale property, you ask yourself another question here. Recently, uh, all, uh, if you were to go and look for units, uh, actually the resale prices never really come down and they are very holding very strong. Some of them, uh, the sellers are even holding very strong. Why? Because resale market is a bit different because today most of the owner only own one unit or the most is two units. Do they want to sell you cheap? No, eh? because they want to buy another development, right? For upgrades, eh? they also got to pay higher. So eventually they also want have to no choice, right? But to sell higher as well. So if you look at the market today, should I buy new or should I buy resale? I show you the information first. Like Commonwealth Tower. If you look at today, all the buyers bought here during new launch. Today, the prices has gone up to this price. How many of you will choose to buy this development Commonwealth Tower for investment? Let's say talk about investment. Buy for own state, I cannot stop you because it's something you want to buy for own state, right? If you really want to buy something for investment point, can I ask you, will you want to buy this resale property based on the price tag of $2,000 range now? Can I ask every one of you? They bought at about $1,006. Today, the price is uh, about $2,000. Can, can I ask every one of you today based on this price? Now it has moved to this level. Will you want to buy yes or no? Some of you say yes, some of you say no, right? Very difficult to answer all these questions, right? So if you ask me, nothing wrong. If you really want to buy something that is immediately you can buy for own sake, of course, go for it. But if you today buy something here, is this price or you are buying at this peak, at this point of time. So how much can you go up? Let, let's see later on, right? How the information works. You look at this development, Caspian. Most of the develop, most of the buyer bought here. Today it has reached here. So is it safe? Look at today, uh, even for Jurong Wise, uh, some of the new launches upcoming will be easily priced at two thousand dollars average. Especially we have another development coming in Lake Gardens, right? Will be coming up. Average the price will be at how much? Again, will be around two thousand average. So. Those who actually bought this development at that point of time in 2013, today the price is still about the what? Same. Yes, you see, it has came down. Today it has came back. But if you look at 2013 until today, the price never appreciate that much. Why? Why? The question is why? Let's see further. If you look at J Gateway, same thing. They bought here. He has came here today he came down a little bit then he came up again now he's at this price the highest transaction if i'm not wrong has already hit more than two thousand dollars so the question is will you want to buy question mark again right so let me show you another one if you look at this why is it that if you ask yourself this very important question if you were to buy something at this price of $2,000, how much must you sell in the future? How much do you want to sell? If any one of you here, my friend, if you buy something at $2,000, how much do you want to sell? Can I ask every one of you, how much do you want to sell in the long run for uh, this property? This, this development uh, starting from 2012, 2012, Daniel, 2002 minimum, 2005, wow. 30% appreciation, 30% eh? is 2.6, eh? 2006, right? So is it high? Wow. Well, you need to sell at, at least 2003 per square foot, lah, eh? let's say eh, 2003. So the problem is what? Let me share with everybody. The challenge is a little bit what? If today you buy this buyer who bought at 1006 per square foot, in fact, they just need to sell at $2,000. Eh? They already make the profit they want. But if there is 20 owners out there who bought at this kind of price tag, right? They all wanted to sell at 2000, but you want to sell at 2003, 2004, right? The problem here is who want to buy your 2324? People will choose to buy what? Here. And we have 738 units bought during launch. And all these people who buy during the launch average is about 1617 range. Do they need to sell at 2003? They don't need. They sell at $2,000, they already make the profit. So the challenge is what? 
if you buy at this price, how much do you need to sell? Same thing, if you look at this. Those who bought Caspian today at 1,004 per square foot, let's say 1,004 is cheap, right? Because just like I mentioned to you, Ma, the new launch is going to be at Jurong will be at $2,000. Definitely, it makes sense for you to buy at 1,004, right? It's normal. Of course, if those people really want to buy for investment, then your question mark here is, you can buy at 1,004. So, next time you want to sell at 1,007. But these people who bought at $600, they do not need to sell at 1,007. They sell at 1,004 per square foot. They will make profit. So, why people still eventually, some people will choose to buy new launches because first, they all start from this phase. That's why people feel more comfortable. There is no differentiation. But those people who bought resale, they need to sell higher. Eventually, their exit, exit uh, will be tough. Right, to me, uh, every one of you here, to me, most important, uh, we know how to buy property. Important is not about buying a property. Important, everyone must remember one very important concept called exit. For me, when I come to buy a property, I always look at exit. Later on, I will show you what do I mean by that at the last few slides I'm going to show you here. So if you ask me, look at the resale market today. On average, this is already this way. It has also surpassed a new peak already. So when it has surpassed a new peak, that means next down, down the road, three to five years down the road, you have to accept that. You have to look at whether this resale property, can it go to a new high that fast? Resale property and new launch is a bit different. Resale property, we need to depend on valuation. Eh? Remember, eh? we need to depend on valuation. If you want to sell at 2003, but market price is $2,000, there is a difference of $300 per square foot, the bank may not grant at 2003 to match the valuation. The difference between the $2,000 to $300 per square foot, eh, if it's based on 1,000 square feet unit, right? You multiply by the difference of 300, this is where you need to come out additional 25%, which is normal that you need to down pay, plus 300K that you need to down pay in order to buy at the 2003 per square foot unit, for example. So what above valuation must be topped up by cash plus the 25%. So for the resale property, this is one of the challenge valuation. But for new launches, it's different. New launches, they can buy at 2000. For example, developers sell you at 2000. Eventually, developers sold at 2003 for another unit. The, the valuation uh, can match 2003. The bank can match the valuation, but resale is different. They need to ensure that resale transaction got hit 2003, then they will hit, so-called they will match the valuation. So you must understand this uh, because why? Cheap doesn't mean that you will actually uh, in a safe zone. Why resale property and new launch must have a gap? If resale property, there is no gap between a new launch, right? Then how can we, how, who will want to buy new launches? Cannot be one. Right? So people want to buy because there is a gap. If not, uh, then we still, if you buy, if not, uh, then who buy the resale property? If the resale and the new launch is so near narrow, right? Then who will buy? Nobody will buy. So if you ask me, then Kelvin, those who buy new launch at a higher price, can they still exit? Of course, we have seen many, many, many scenario and many, many cases, eventually they still manage to sell higher. So this is how it works here, right? Let me show you. Of course, what is the difference between resale? First advantage is people who can move in immediately. You can collect rental size is good enough, but square foot is lower. Of course, the disadvantage in my opinion here, in my opinion, eh, is of course your PSF is also down most of them at the peak. Then you say, Kelvin, then I go and find property that is, has not gone up much. So I also want to tell you, those property in the resale market has not gone up too much. Eh, you also must ask yourself this question. Why these property are not going up and the rest have been going up? Everybody, everything got is reason one, right? So of course, resale generally is also older. Buyer's behavior today also has changed. A lot of people like to buy something new. Why? Because they don't want to spend money on renovation. Because renovation can be hundred to 200,000. Now, uh, renovation is also not cheap, right? So renovation is all cash. Ma. You buy a new one, right? First and foremost, you only pay 25%. The most is just do some basic so-called reno. You can actually shift in already if you want to, right? 
the amount of thing that you need to do for a new house is definitely lesser than an old house. So it really depends on your needs. So if your needs is really to buy for one stay, please go and buy what you need to stay. You cannot expect the price to drop for the resale. But if you want to buy something for investment, then you start to really think whether it's worthwhile to buy a new one or not. But the question is, how do I determine a new property is worth to buy? So again, I will share with you later on how it works. Just a bit of introduction about myself. I'm in the market for the last 20 years uh, from an agent to really eventually become the executive director of the company. And of course, now I do a lot of consumer seminars, educational seminars to educate people. So of course, myself has also written a book which I'm not selling anymore. But my focus is not just about buying a property. For me, my sharing, those people who attended my two days workshop before, right? I touched a lot of building, how do you build your net worth? Because I myself have successfully done it. I started from just a normal HDB flat. I don't have the enough money, right? That time 20 years ago, really got nothing much. I don't have cash right now, right? So the, I also bought a resale, why? Because I told my wife, I cannot afford to do renovation loan because I am, I'm a regular in the Air Force before I become a real estate person. But I have actually, I mean, due to this HDB flat allows me to understand about real estate and that's where both of us started the real estate journey. So when I went into the real estate journey, right, it allows me to learn a lot from all the investors, how they own private property, commercial property, everything they actually share with me. So I myself have also learned since, 2000, since 2004, I already start investing in property until today. That's why it allows me today, I still own all this developments uh, uh, units available right this is this is the one of the house in fact this Didesh house I bought during when uh, during COVID 2020 2020 at that point of time I bought this house was not cheap but today uh, the value the value has cost has increased uh, a lot more why because I bought it when everybody dare not buy it at that time and it's all about what my friend, it's all about timing. How do you look at timing? For me, I always look at timing, right? So that's the reason why I do a lot of educational seminar. I was, I mean, one of these uh, journalists also attended my workshop. They understand how I actually look at what? Look at numbers. How do I look at information, right? Because I share a lot of uh, tips on how do you actually grow your capital through assets. Everything to me is all about strategies. How can you do it in a sense, right? So to me, I focus on three very important things. Timing, financing, strategies. Of course, financing, I'm not going to go into detail today because financing is a very big topic. Uh, it's really due to numbers, which if you have a chance to come and attend my workshop next time, right? Do and attend my workshop in September as well. So today, I want to focus on timing. How do I look at timing? If you look at today, interest rate, right? It's one of the biggest concern. What will happen to the real estate market? So, of course, we all expect that the U.S. so-called will actually stop increasing in terms of interest rate. But this guy came out and said that they might have increased another two more rounds before it put a full stop to it. The reason why they are doing it is because the first and foremost, the inflation has gone up a lot. I want to ask every one of you this question here. I'm the business for the last 20 years, right? Can I ask every one of you this question? How many of you know that interest rate increase how many times in the last 20 years? Can you type inside the chat group how many times? How many times? Only one person. Some say three, wow, 17 times, 30 times. Wow, so many, right? So of course, I want to share with you here. Actually, in fact, later on, I will share with you later on. Uh, but you see, uh, actually, Fed actually says that they will increase the interest rate, right? But if you look at Singapore market, uh, actually, early of this year, uh, those people who take interest rate uh, was 4.25. Now, uh, he has dropped to 3.38%. Why are they a drop? Because, right, if you look at a bank, uh, if they don't lock you, I, that's why I want to say, uh, you think carefully for those who are taking loan, uh, try not to lock in for so long now, because why I... I think next year the interest rate will definitely have a very low time. You know, my landed house that I bought, right? My interest rate that I paid was only 0 0.5. Absolute uh, 0.5%. 
But today I paid more lah because why interest rate went up, correct or not? But actually, in fact, interest rate only increased four times uh, in the row of 20 years. Eh. So to me, uh, to me, later on I will show you the numbers. Uh. To me, I want to show show you share with you one thing, right? In fact, interest rate every time goes up one year, it came down. Or sometimes it's faster, sometimes uh, slightly a little bit like now, right? A bit longer. Why is it so? It's because of inflation are very stubborn of not coming down. It has come down a lot already, but still not what the Fed is actually looking at. But the most important here is what? If you look at this, uh, Fed is increasing interest rate. Why Singapore Bank want to lower interest rate? Think about it. Why? The only reason that is very simple for you to know here is because we all expect interest rate to drop. So when interest rate drop, they better lock you first. So, so they lock you, they actually secure their income for the next two years, man. correct or not? So you must remember. So if you look at this, uh, 4.25, right? And how? That's why it's important, it's very important. That's why uh, uh, it's important to know this. Uh, in fact, if you ask me, right, the, the truth of the matter here is that for those people who are buying property today, I, I would say uh, you are the luckier one. Why do I say so? Because you know what you are paying at the highest point now. Better than me, right? I buy 0.5%, right? Now it has went up to 4%, right? Who is more worried? Me, right? But now you know what is the worst, right? Isn't it better for you? And we all know that eventually interest rate must fall, which I'm going to show you the numbers, right? Look at this. Look at this. This is the year of almost 20 year cycle. Interest rate, look at here, was lower. If you ask me 16 years of increasing in interest rate, uh, a four times of increase in interest rate, uh, you enjoy 16 years of low interest rate, right? Is it okay or not? Right, think about it, right? So if you look at this low interest rate environment, everybody will always remember one thing. Uh, when interest rate is, low there is always a demand that's why you see property price went up am i right you see every time a property price people say can we put money in the bank is waste time because why the fixed deposit is only 0.000 percent if you all recall right somebody complaining to me now the fixed deposit inside the bank give you how many how many percent now three over percent used to be four over percent now even the fixed deposit has dropped already from four over percent drop to three over percent so when the interest rate increased look at here 2019 cooling measure 2019 uh, actually in fact i want to tell everybody we are in fact uh, in this cycle now it's in this cycle in fact all those people who choose not to buy property here uh, they always an opportunity this is the time interest rate was high people say kevin interest rate was high better don't buy plus cooling measure wait for the market to come down first before i buy so subsequently, because of COVID, interest rate fall. When interest rate fall, again, when there's low interest rate environment, what happened again? Demand come in. So when the demand come in again, what happened? You see how the prices move. How the prices move. Now, again, we are here. Interest rate, cooling measure high. So a lot of people say, Kelvin, that's why I'm telling you the demand in fact, will be low this year. Will be low one, I can tell you. It will be low. Depend on you. Whether you want to buy when the demand is high or you want to buy when demand is low. It depends on you. Every time when market is down, always the demand is low one. But when the market is good, everybody starts to rush in. But this is human psychology factor. You cannot change the fact. So why? that's the reason why I'm not a, I'm a very logical and statistic person. I would not want to tell you based on how I feel emotionally. No, nope. I always will tell you based on how I look at demand and supply factual information because only facts can give you the answer. If you talk about emotion, how you think, how I think, this is not logical. Not logical is called risk. To me, uh, anything that is not logical is based on emotion. Uh, is all so-called risk. That's me. So I always look at timing, right? Timing. If you look at today, why is it that the resale market is holding very strong? First and foremost, if you're the resale owner, you only have one property or the max two property 
Will you want to sell cheap? Anybody want to sell your resale property cheap one? Can you type inside the chat group? You want to sell cheap one so that I can get my agent to help you to, to, to actually find a buyer. Anybody want to sell cheap one? I believe nobody want to sell cheap, right? Anybody want to sell cheap one? Please tell us, you know. But you see, uh, developer, the problem is what? They have 500 units. 500 units. Today, because of the demand is low, right? Just how I say already, really, demand is low, right? Demand is low, right? Demand is low. Developer also know, ma. The developer would say what? I also worry, right? I worry that I cannot sell, ma. So what would they do? Would they want to price it high? That's why you look at some of the developments, uh, recent launch, right? Why there are so many people who buy? In fact, one of the development like Blossom, for example, the Blossom project, right? Blossom uh, at the One North area, that was cooling measure just implemented. Two days later, they launched the development and they sold 75% or more. Why? Remember everyone, I always focus on the right entry price. And most important, you all must understand, if you look at the answer, if, if you know how to determine the right entry price, right? The next thing that you will know how to determine is called the exit price. Remember these two keywords from me. I buy property based on these two very fundamental. Entry, exit. I want to buy something that is easy to enter. I want to exit. I want to exit easily. So it depends on you. But for me, I'm going to share with you later on. How do I look at the entry and exit? So how do you look at first mover strategy? Because for me, it's the same. No, I buy property based on first mover one. Huh? How do you look at this is one of the development Martin Modern. You guess how much I bought this development? This also I bought in 2016 or 2017, if I'm not wrong, right? I bought the property, I think it's at 2050 per square foot. That time market is not stable. Nobody will think that this development, especially is 99 years, worse still. 99 years, uh, worse still, uh, and majority of those at River Valley are freehold, but I choose to buy 99 and about at this price. You look at this, uh, look at this. Uh, this is what I'm trying to show you here, right? Th this is called average. Uh. Average, uh, their price is, when they launch at time, uh, average is 2207. And I buy below this price, 2050, average. Uh. And eventually, uh, just only a uh, quarter to, look at this, uh, look at this. Uh. At quarter, at this point of time to deal, uh, you look at the price, went up to how much? $2,777 per square foot. From when? 2017, 2018, right? Look at here. The price uh, within a short frame uh, went up so much. And the valuation, uh, I tell you, uh, can match. I buy at 2050, right? And they sold at 2777, valuation can match. So automatically, what happened to me? my property can reach this price already ma, because the valuation can hit here right so is it a much more easy for me uh, that's for you to see eh? so you look at here 2017 july this is where the time they bought we bought look at this time these are all new sales eh? new sales eh? i purposely show you the same stack eh? purposely show you the same stack eh? you look at the price differences can you imagine you are the first mover of this property Will you have a better chance in terms of long run? I cannot tell you whether you make money or not. I cannot. But at least, at least you know one thing for sure. You are buying something at the lower price. So that's the reason why you must know how to look at entry. Entry price. Right? Remember this keyword, uh, entry. Uh, how to look at it. Even look at sub-sale. This is all resale and sub-sale already. Uh. Look at this price. That means uh, we can sell all these kind of prices already. Uh. So easily, uh, I'm sitting on a profit of half a million and above. I still holding on to it, right? So the question is, how do I look at this? So if you look at those prop people who took profit, right? I mean, Martin Modern, not bad, right? How you wish you are that, right? They bought in 2017, they sold at 2021, four years only, uh, my goodness, uh, make $1 million, right? But of course, sometimes we work so hard, also cannot save at $1 million, uh, people just buy asset, right? So that's the reason why, my friend, Timing is very important. How do I look at timing? Huh? You look at this. This is also, I was there. I was here. I was one of them here at Riverfront. Look at all these people. This was cooling measure was announced in 2018. 
at about five, six o'clock, six, seven o'clock, if I re cannot remember. Wow, everybody rushing. A lot of people say, Kelvin, these people are stupid. They go in and buy at uh, that time, uh, sure, wait for the price to drop. But actually, in fact, those people who bought, uh, actually today, they are sitting a very good profit. Eh? You look at Sterling, uh, look at their price, their break even now uh, is 1615. Eh? And Sterling is also one of the affected properties uh, during the cooling measure. Straight away that night, they open the, the door uh, and start to sell that night. That's why nowadays a cooling measure announced at midnight. Eh? Nowadays, uh, if you know uh, every one of you here, right? All the cooling measure now, uh, now government trend is announced at midnight. They only, they, they, they wait for everybody's sleep, then they open up because they're scared you go to the show flat uh, before midnight to do the, the purchase, right? So this is what <laughs> government is trying to do now, right? So interesting, right? But you look at this, same thing, their break even is this. So when they launched at time in 2018, these are the people who bought. Look at today, they sold at this price. They make profit. Look at this. These are the people who make profit today, they sold. They bought, they bought exactly, you see, 2018 July. Today, they are making profit. Why? Because they buy at the right timing. Look at this, again, the Emma, the Emma, middle road. Also, look at the break even, 2258. You see, February 2020, cooling measure. Right, I'm not cooling measure. That time was already a bit going to COVID, right? They launched at this price, 2 1. You look at today, subs, new sales, 2 6. From here to here. So, can you imagine you are the first group of people who purchase today? Will you actually have a benefit or not? Even you see uh, the new sales here, uh, also 2 4, eh? but you are buying at this. Eh? You see when they bought, they bought at the later time. You see this, they bought at a later time. But today, one of the owner already sub sale out, uh, making a profit. Already bought at twenty twenty, they sold at today, uh, three years exactly, right? They make quarter million dollars. Good enough for such a small unit. Make a quarter million and not bad, right, my friend? Why? It's all about timing, right? How do you look at timing? This is also another development. Florence, first day of selling, a uh, three point eight percent only. Uh, out of thousand over unit, they only sold fifty four unit out of thousand four unit. But what happened? Uh, let's see, those people who bought during this point of time, 1000, 2003, today, you look at the price. So again, it's all about timing. Timing, timing, timing. Entry, entry price. How do we look at it later? I'll show you, right? You see how the Florence owner has made the amount of profit they have made. Those who bought during the right timing, like this is where, this is exactly during the bank increases to 3.2% a 3.2% interest rate. Plus 2018 cooling measure, just now I show you the, the, the interest rate thing, right? It exactly fall within this circle, these two things. That's why I want to tell every one of you here, we are in this cycle of 2019, interest rate increase, cooling measure in place. Think about it. Everything goes up, must come down. Right? You were surprised Singapore probably why never come down, right? Because Singapore is really very unique. Uh, because there's lack of supply in the market. That's why the prices are high in today's, right? Now, just now I talked so much about timing, right? Now I want to talk about strategies, really. How do I look at strategies? Uh? Look at this. So I'm going to use this example, Pine Tree Hill. Let's look at this. How do I determine in terms of the safe bet? For me, it's a very simple one. Just now I talk about entry. Later on, I will talk about exit. How do I ensure myself the entry price is right? My exit will be safe for me. So the question is, what are the factors that we need to consider before we actually purchase a property? Let's look at this. I look at five very important factors that I'm looking into. Supply demand. Just like I talk about supply demand also, right? Next, school. A lot of people thinking school, is it important? How do I look at entry, at price gap, exit? This is important. This is important. Huh? When there's a gap, there's an opportunity. Huh? How do we see all this information here? So why, what, I, what do I mean by supply and demand? The supply and demand, just I sh before this, uh, I show you is the overall picture, right? Now I'm going to zoom into this development. Of course, at the end of the day, you can buy whatever projects you want to buy. I leave it to you. But at the end of the day here, I'm just looking at based on this to do a case study for you to take reference. You look at Pine Tree Hill. This development, uh, after so many years, 14 years, uh, this is the first time there is a plot of land that is actually selling within this area. 
actually this area is actually very close to Mount Sinai. In fact, this development, uh, the advantage is what, you know, let me tell you guys here, right? Actually, it's not the core central region. It's also not, it's in the RCR zone. But the good news here is that really for those people who want to buy for school, uh, you don't need to pay this price. You pay this price. That's the advantage here. So if you ask me whether is there a lot of supply here, in fact, currently uh, only got this plot of land, plus another upcoming one will be puzzle two, which is the same plot, but the next door puzzle two. Other than that, there is nothing already, which I'll cover later on. So if you look at this area, we are actually almost like a sandwich between RCR and core central region. Then the good thing here is that, right, this development is near to Bukitima, is near to Holland, is near to Clementi. So people who stay here, generally, you have upgraders from where? From Clementi, Bukitima area, plus further away, maybe Holland area, who doesn't want to pay a premium, eventually may also come here as well. So that is an opportunity here. So that's the reason why just now we mentioned, right? The advantage of this development here is you have a pool of supply coming into this area. When there is not enough supply here, why? Because Pi Tree Hill, I mentioned to you, right? There's only one plot, which is now. Second plot is Puzzle 2, which is just within this location. Other than that, the rest of the development, uh, if I were to show you, right? All these the other developments, are uh, you can see how old they are. Except for Mon View, uh, it's 15 years, 11 years, Trizon, these two. But you look at generally, oh, maybe this is another one, right? 14 years. The rest is 30, 20 years one. And if you look at all the older product, uh, and the sizes are generally bigger in size. So the absolute quantum uh, can be higher as well. So the affordability may not be so strong. As for Pine Tree Hill, because they are under the new development, in fact, if you look at the absolute quantum, will be much lower compared to many of these projects here. So if you look at this Pine Tree Hill, right, we, we really get to enjoy everything in one circle, right? So, like I mentioned to you, currently, yeah, currently, this part suite, right, is left with seven units from the developer, which is actually within one kilometer to Henry Park. In fact, for Pine Tree Hill, the good news here is what? As parents, every one of you here, the most important thing is what? School. Because why everybody wants to send children to this school. For those who look at Mount Sinai area, it, this, this, that, you see, uh, this is the really, really one of the greatest advantage, uh, if you ask me. Uh, you don't need to pay premium like core central region. Normally in CCR, you need to pay $3,000 per square foot. In fact, Van Holland, uh, this development Van Holland, right? Or Holland Village uh, left with six units. Uh, these are all not within one click, uh, not within one click. Uh, and their price of a core central region can hit $3,000 and above per square foot. $3,000, uh, $3K and above. But here, here is one click without needing to pay $3,000. If you ask me, Pine Tree and this location between Holland and here, how far can it be? Five minute drive, you'll reach. One bus or two, how many bus stops you can reach already in Holland, right? But you don't need to pay premium. Why do I want to tell you everybody about this thing here? It's important because why? As I mentioned something called the exit. I mentioned something called exit, right? You must find opportunity for people to buy from you. And the best thing is that if the older project already bigger in size, the quantum is bigger, those who cannot afford to buy those higher quantum, they will have to come to this location to buy a smaller quantum. And I want to go into a school. That gives me assurance to make sure that, right, I always have a safeguard on myself because I can easily rent out or I actually can stay for my own children or I can easily sell to someone who wants to buy from me because of the one kilometer school. And I can tell you, even, I mean, I can share with you here is that, right? Once the school is forever here, if the school is forever here, you forever will have somebody want to rent. Why? Because everybody wants to put their children to good school. And nowadays, all parents are all standard, right? So it's, this is the way. So is school a very important advantage when it comes to buying a property? Let me show you here. This is one of the articles that I saw. Uh, this article was actually in October 2021. First and foremost, uh, those that is near to good school, uh, seven out of 10 project price rise uh, 
more than 10%. Like for example, St. Hilda in Tampines rose by 32.8% for some of the properties over there for seven months uh, of 2019. Uh. And I'm going to show you information here. And, and, and plus today, uh, another, attra another very attractive point is what, you know, because of the thing has changed, uh, because the because the primary one, uh, sorry, uh, my daughter shouts so loud, uh, I say, uh, <laughs> right? So the most important is what? Uh, if you look at the P1 registration, last time alumni, right, will straight away go and have this opportunity because they don't need to be one click. Now, uh, even for alumni, right, also must have the one click registration. Eh? So which means what, you know? Which means that, right, there will be more demand uh, to buy this property. That means my exit, is it better now? A higher chance now. That means I get to not only buy, sell to people who just want to buy within one click. I will also have an opportunity to touch on people who are alumni people as well. So it actually creates a more opportunity for us. Uh, when I'm buyer myself, right, I will find that my exit uh, is so much safer in a sense. That's one thing that you need to know. Of course, Henry Park is definitely one of the very, very popular school among this area as well. And of course, Henry Park is definitely one of the most popular la, within all the top few, la, right? You, you guys know better than me, right? So, and best thing is what Henry Park, even Peitong are just within one kilometer to the school. And the best thing is that you don't need to pay a premium away. For those who slightly above one to two kilometer, this is also very nearby as well. And of course, the good news here is what? Those people who want to go from primary to secondary to tertiary, all the schools are within reach and you don't need to be worried of. So, so why, do we, why do you guys need to know this? When you know this, right, it's also good for you because why? Your exit uh, is important. Some parents buy a property may stay for 10 years, 15 years. At least their children is all taken care of from primary to secondary to tertiary. So does it mean that next time you want to sell will be much more easier? That's why school has a very good advantage for many people here. Let's look at numbers, uh, called their zoo, right? Kod Diazu is one of, I use, just use Kod Diazu as one of key studies uh, versus some of the Century Green Water Place, which is more than one kilometer away from the good school, uh, Tao Nan. Uh. Everybody know Tao Nan is quite a good school, right? Look at the price. Kod Diazu, since they launched until today, has increased 195%. Water Place went up to 143. Century Green, 170%. I mean, if you look at the percentage, honest truth here is not bad. But if it's near to good school, your jump is higher, right? Everybody want a higher numbers, right? If you are staying in Kod Diazu today, you are enjoying 195% return uh, in that sense. Uh. Why? Because of the school. That's why school always have a premium 10 to 15% more. That is normal, right? So if you look at another example, Rosai, right? It's also one of the very popular school as well. So those property that is not within the Rosai, more than one click, look at this. Region view. 152%. Salita Spring, 130. Aukang Green, 58. So can you see that near to school always has a premium above, which means that uh, just now I talked on very, very important thing, right timing. Right? Plus right entry, right entry, yeah, will actually give you what? Exit better. This is important. So how do we look at numbers next? So that's why I always share with people how to look at right entry price. How do we determine? Let's look at this. If you look at this pine tree hill, they are break even. Just like I show you some of the example of those developers who sell at break even, right? When the market was, when the demand is low, they sell at the opening price, including what I bought for Martin Modern. You look at Sterling, you look at uh, many of this development here, just I show you, they all started at where? When the market was actually low, low. And their price is what? Right, their price is attractive. And you can see from here. And this is their break even. That means uh, to sell with profit, uh, they must sell above. But today, they are, what price are they selling? Let's look further. Look at recent launches uh, in the RCR for new launches, right? Their average has already done from Blossom by the park, 
Bamboo Shoe, 2004, 2004, 2005, 2005, 2006, 2007 for different development, all within RCR development. This developer, they are looking at 2236 per square foot from, from, huh? they are actually selling at their so-called break even price. That's the reason why I'm saying just now. Is there an opportunity? That's why I say developer today, Bo Piedmont, developer today got 500 unit. They cannot sell at a lower price. They cannot sell at a higher price because the demand is not as high. That's why when the demand is not strong, it gives opportunity to who? As a buyer myself, we have opportunity because why? Demand is not strong. So it gives you an opportunity to look at information. Look at latest launch, uh, leave at MB. From the price of 2003 to even 27, 29, 26, 25, 24, all has been accepted by a lot of buyers. If you look at today, uh, District 15, District 5, near Mount Sinai and Cave area, near to Holland V, based on 2002 plus, is this something that is reasonable to you guys here? That's why I see. That's why there is a window for all of us here. It's only how we look at information. Look at even landmark today. If RCR development, which is near to uh, this uh, Autrum area, average is 25, 26, 27, 28, has all been done. So it's not about, it's a ridiculous price. They are selling really as something that is attractive for you to see. You look at all the resale transaction in RCR, even resale has already done from 21 to even 24. You look at Pailaba, Pailaba Park Place. It was TOP in 2019. The tenure was start from 2015. Resale has even go highest at 23. Average is 21. We are talking about 2002 plus something. Is it something that is very difficult to exit? Uh, that's for you to look into it. And you look at recently those TOP projects that is from RCR. For example, Mayfair Modern. It has also crossed 2002 to 2004 per square foot. Done deal, sub sale, huh? not new sales, right? If you look at Sterling, just like I mentioned to you, resale 2002, 2003, 2004 has also been done. So, is it something that is on a high risk they are selling? That's why I say resale property, you may seem cheap, but may not be as cheap as well. So, you must open your eyes to see. Even for the OCR today, has also crossed 2000. 2001, 2002 has also been done for Amo residences at Amokyo. Even Botany has also been accepted, like 2002, 2001, 2000, 2009 plus also have, right? Depends on OCR. But what am I show, showing you here is that today, the OCR prices has been very close to our RCR prices. So the gap is actually what? Also very narrow. If you look at Seaside, OCR, Panorama, $2,000, 2001, 2003 has all been done. $2,000 has been done. So even a resale property after so many years has crossed 2000 Brand new development for RCR at such kind of pricing, is it something safe or not? Ah, that's for you to see. That's why it's important to know one thing, price gap. Price gap, right, actually allow you to look at something that is safe bet. How do we look at this? This is the average transaction based on OCR, RCR, and CCR. The average is already done at 2005 for RCR. And OCR average is 2000 to 2001 range already has been done, right? So if you look at this, OCR in sum up, right, for this portion, uh, OCR for new launches has uh, hit $2,000. Resale also has done this price. Resale in the RCR has done this price. RCR, OCR. Today, Pine Tree going at this price. And we all know that RCR has done new launches at this price. You look at this here, the gap. Is it very narrow? When the gap is narrow, it allows us to have the opportunity in a sense. It gives you security in a sense. So this is something that you can see. Is it safe bet? So what do I do? The last portion is called the exit. So how do I look at exit? First and foremost, I must look at who are my buyer's future, right? At least I know one thing, I'm surrounded with all the million dollar HDB owners out there who can easily qualify to buy my property. Look at today, HDB cost a million dollar. We are talking about a private condo, two bedroom at $1.5 million. 
So is it something that is not logical? Even the one two bedroom, one bedroom here is only about one point two over million dollars. Is it something not logical? So next, competitors are also limited. You look at Van Hollen, highest transaction two thousand, two thousand three thousand two, lowest is average is two thousand nine. Just I mentioned, my you are in between of the sandwich, right? And Holland Village, average is two thousand nine, highest is three four, and it's not within one click. Park Suite last seven units, average is two three. So they are actually selling properties uh, below what has been done, and it's at the same location. For example, Henry, uh, this Park Suite, right, which is so nearby to this development, Henry Park as well, and their pricing they are selling is what price? Not at a higher price as well, right? And the only plot that's coming out is where this puzzle B. And this puzzle B, I want to tell you here, only partial of the plot is within one click to Henry Park, which means that your competitors uh, is plus this development plus this half uh, is only that number of units available. And they haven't even bid it yet. And next, if you look at Holland Drive, which is the next plot that is up for bidding, right? is also not within one click. So your competitors uh, within the location uh, is actually much lesser as compared to overall over here. That's the reason why Pine Grove, Pine Tree Hills, right? Actually has, just like I talk about demand supply, right? There is a demand, but the supply is not there to, to so-called give more consumer to go in and buy because of schools as well and because of the location. So it gives us an advantage in a sense for you to look into. Now, I want to share with you the exit strategy. Just like I mentioned, right? if you buy something at 2006, just now you already saw, right? a lot of existing launch or even resale has also done at the kind of 2000 level. If you bought something new launch at 2006, you how much you want to sell? Right? Can I ask every one of you, if you buy at 26, how much do you want to sell? Can I ask everybody to type inside the chat group, how much do you want to sell? If you buy at 26, wow, 3,002, oh my goodness, right? $3,000. So if I buy something at 2003, because just some new launch in RCR, just like I show you, right? Average is about done at 2005, right? They need to sell at 26 or some average at 26. You need to sell at 2829, right? But if you buy at 2003 today, for example, you only need to sell at 2006 per square foot. If you buy something at, for example, right? If you buy something at 2003, you just need to sell at 2006. Is it easy for you to exit? And the best, the good news here is what? This 2006, right? Is already what people has already willing to buy. And you are buying something at 2003, which is what the current market has already been done, or even at OCR has been done, resale has done, new launches has above that. So it gives you what? A safe bet, in my opinion. So of course, at the end of the day, it's about the development, how you look at it. So if you look at today, for OCR, benchmark average is about 2.1. RCR average is 2.5. This development is going at 2002 plus to even 23 range. Is it something that is safe? But I can tell you, lah, it's all about the current market situation. That's why it gives you an opportunity to what? To look at something of a demand. Of course, there are many projects out there in the market, but at least now you, you can understand this concept, right? For me, I always want to buy the first mover early stage. Second, I want to buy when everything has already done above what I'm going to buy. I will feel safer. And I want to buy based on the timing. Today timing, the demand, uh, demand uh, is low. When the demand is low, there is always an opportunity for me. But when the demand is high, everybody start to buy their time, right? It's the time I always like to think about selling. So it really depends on you, how I look at it. So if, whether is it safe or not, I would say that first and foremost, the supply means competitor is lesser. Means that next time you want to exit will be easier as well. And first and foremost, you look at it, it's one kilometer to Henry Park. And the price gap between OCR and versus this is very narrow. It gives us an opportunity as well. And of course, not much competition. And I feel that it's something that is safe for you to look at.
So this is how I feel. Of course, at the end of the day, there are many, many considerations that you can look at. So of course, what is important, you must understand. So of course, uh, for those people who really want to understand a little bit more, my suggestion here is you can take a look.